11 starting off with the CFTC report we had a reduction in euro longs and overall there seemed to be a big reduction in the USD short positioning that dragged that dragged down the overall USD positioning back to a little bit levels that we haven't seen since July overall market still bearish on USD for several different reasons reflation trade carrying on and global inflation picking up but it seems to be a really strong reduction in the euro side that corresponds with what we saw in the price action over the past weeks as well there's also reluctance in entering cat bullish even though it made some really strong moves last week so that's something i will continue monitoring but nothing new really came out there's no new positioning there's mostly just stepping back from old positioning and, and sitting to see what happens so markets letting getting starting to get a little bit more suspicious of what's happening in the near term Danske Bank uh, points out that this coming next few weeks we will have incredible negative cash flow from the bond side for euro that tends to be a positive for euro JPY euro so last couple of weeks we had negative cash flow we're continuing to see that quite um, strong so next week minus 33 billion the following 31 billion euros and so on that's something that tends to underpin euro overall before i start looking at the next week what i want to do is i want to have a look back at the last 10 weeks and all the directional calls we've had and the way we looked at market starting off with january usdjpy had a trade going to try to capture 1250 it nearly clipped 1250 it stopped at 158 and uh, Ironically, that, that was the bottom so far for this year and it started a monster rally after that. But we did get it that we are looking for. The following week on the 10th of January started lagging into Euro GBB short from and the video that I've posted under the title week two, how to trade the Forex calendar, pointed out that we're looking for a move into 86. So 86 got smashed lower and we're looking at 85, 84 levels. But it was a trade that had sound reasoning sound macro behind it and it played out well after that on the 17th of january i've made the case that gold has topped for the remainder of the year i um, wasn't too sure where to really start looking for shorts i was expecting a sort of a bounce coming from this area before i commit to a short after i was looking for a dead cat bounce but really we're looking for lows and that materializes continue to play along as well on the 24th of january what we had was US GDP and I've made the case that after every US GDP you tend to see the S&P 500 rally so that was the day of the GDP the following day on the Friday we saw another small dip before a monster rally emerged uh, to, to finish the month off on the following week which was the 1st of February had another really really strong bullish call on GBUSD was looking for new highs here on the Sunday notes I've mentioned where we're looking to enter again sound reasoning on the macro perspective a lot of logic behind that move and we saw a really magnificent rise near to 500 pips a person didn't manage to capture all of the 500 pips but the narrative was all there to to trade on the long side on the following few weeks so on the 14th of february we had where was that euro aud where I said I'm looking to take out 155 level underneath that level and we really did a neat strong drop underneath that level and uh, pretty much stood there on the back of the reflation narrative and a big trend that was already carrying on just really was looking for the continuation it was important to understand why this drop was happening so we can really anticipate that coming through as a follow-through uh, which did materialize follow we had a uh, following week we had the 20, 21st of february it was nzdjpy it was a really short trade a day trade for me that i was just anticipating a quick dip in the beginning of the week which did materialize to the pip i was looking for 7680 uh, got lucky uh, sometimes it doesn't really hit your, your your original profit target and just starts turning and you need to scale out but we got lucky there it, it did the dip before taking off again so that was sort of a counter trend trade on the 1st of march on the back of yields falling 
and Euro, Euro GBP falling too. I anticipated that Euro USD will take out the 120 level and go into 118, which it did. So beginning of the week it was, I believe, a Monday. We saw the dip. It played around, and by the end of the week, it found its mojo, completely took out 120 and stood underneath there for the for the remainder of the week on the back of the yield story. And the last week, which was the first of March, sorry, the 7th of March, anticipated that Eurocard will take out the 150 level on the back of the barrier hunt. It did the dip, it bounced off a little bit and then confidently smashed lower again. So these were the major trades and major trend trades and swing trades I was looking at for the past 10 weeks, which stretch over two and a half months. We would really get to know that following these macroeconomic data can actually result into really solid trade ideas. So I hope you following these videos will look into more looking, studying macro, understanding what the narrative is in the market and how you can play these into trade ideas. Next week, we have a really busy calendar. And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of foresight where these trades will go. There's a lot of reasoning why EURUSD should be heading higher next week before the FOMC because SLR will be extended. So we would like to see EURUSD actually climb above. Um, we're expecting EURUSD to climb above 120 again, but if it fails to do that, we need to rethink that. I am preferably standing back and watching how it evolves. I will not be aggressively getting involved. We have Bank of England announcement next week as well, but you be USD. Again, same scenario. I'm not aggressively want to buy here into recapturing 140. I personally think that it will be a bit more difficult to do that. And I'm quite happy to play it in the back of the week and see how things emerge. There's one or two trades that are becoming interesting in the coming weeks and as the weeks roll over, which is if you do trade the small caps Euro stocks 600 as ECB is ranking up the PEP purchases and holding yields down, I expect and stimulus is coming into Europe really strongly. I expect this to continue its rally higher for at least another couple of months to come. And the other one I'm really interested in trading next week is Euro NZD. I am. I'm seeing inflation coming through in the market. I'm really interested to try get on the reflation trades. And one of them I like to uh, trade is Euro NZD on the short side. Now the level I'm like to trade in is not particularly um, in the, on the, uh, I can't really nail it down on the charts where exactly I want to short it from. For me, time is more important next week. I'm very keen to see how Thursday evolves, how market absorbs all the new data from the Fed on from the Bank of England. But to my understanding is that by the end of the week, towards Thursday and Friday, I should have a really good, strong, solid setup to start selling Euro NZD and taking out even these lows, possibly heading into 63 the following week. So I think we get a really good, the start of another leg down on this currency towards Thursday or Friday. So that would be a trade I'm really interested in taking next week. So again, we've covered a lot of things in the past couple of months. 10 incredibly really strong moving markets and following anticipating macro data and how market is positioned see who's more vulnerable and it's really worth it reading these things up as a as a as the weeks roll over because you'll be able to start building a narrative you'll be able to start um, understanding why these currencies move and once you're all in tune with that understanding where where the trade next trade is is not is not um it's not by chance anymore. It becomes more of a of more understanding where really things are, and you'll be more much more confident trading these markets as well as you are more confident where the direction is. So I hope you find these videos useful in the past. Feel free to look them again underneath that video. You should be able to go back into the um, past weeks, so there will be a playlist and try to go through this video, see the data I was analyzing, why I was trading one currency, why I was disregarding another one, that really will play into your mindset into when you wanna enter the market and why not, because entering the market for us traders is really important. We need volatility behind us, we need to be in the right price, and we need to make sure that we're not gonna end up in a choppy market for too long, where our liquidity is tied up, we can't trade other markets. So I would encourage you to be on top of these things. If you'd like to know more about all of that, I do run a subscription service on speculatorstrading.com where you can come over and have a look at the different 
packages I do, uh, what I have to offer, and I do also a live trading service where I show my entry and exits. Um, Everything is transparent, so if I lose money, we'll be able to see that. If I make money and how I manage my winning positions, you'll be able to see that too. And um, as a bonus, I actually put in the position sizes and the risk I'm taking in as well, which will weigh in how confident I am about a trade idea or um, if I'm flying low, if I'm having a lower positions, if I'm not too certain where market is headed. So be able to gauge that as well. Overall, it's a great learning experience. I'm hoping to, to be able to extend to you too. Thank you very much.